Hey everyone, Riley here with Dark Arrow. We recently finished applying primer to the airframe of the Dark Arrow 1. We had the whole airplane disassembled for that project and now we're in the process of putting everything back together. We thought it'd be a good time to pause and show you the results of our painting work since the airplane obviously looks pretty different compared to its original naked carbon fiber look. We also wanted to talk through some of the details and lessons learned from painting and show you what we have next before we fly the airplane. We're done with the primer paint, but paint isn't done. We're gonna fly the aircraft as you see it here in this gray primer. We're still debating the final paint scheme. That's okay because we wanna fly the airplane first and confirm that we don't have to change anything before we do the final top coat. There'd be no point in doing a really fancy paint scheme and then later learning that we have to mess with it by altering the airframe. So we're gonna do flight testing first and then do the final coat of paint. A couple things I want to say about the paint. One of our objectives all along has been making it easier to build a composite kit plane and a big piece of that is making the stage of getting ready for paint easier. Any kind of kit plane you build that's composite will require some amount of filling and sanding to correct defects. These defects can be pinholes or voids, surface finish variations like peel plied surface finish or print through in the weave pattern or contour variations like joggles or seams. If you can minimize these sorts of defects, it's gonna make it easier to get ready for paint because you're gonna minimize the filling and sanding work that you would otherwise need to correct these defects. We did a pretty good job of minimizing these. I'll show you the biggest areas where we had to correct was along seams. So the whole airframe is built in a couple sections of infused panels. The fuselage has top, sides, and bottom. And they have seams where they come together. We sanded the contour, a little uh, joggle between them so that it's basically seamless when it all comes together. That was the most uh, amount of filling and sanding work. Otherwise though, it was pretty easy. We only had to sand the paint, no major areas of contouring the surface. The way we were able to achieve that is by using an infusion process to make our parts. Infusion does a really good job of creating void-free, pinhole-free parts, but it's not enough to just throw infusion at the process. You need to also have a good mold. So we made precision production grade molds. If you're interested in replicating these results, we do teach courses in both aerospace composites and mold making, and they're taught both online and in person. I'll leave a link in the description of this video if you wanna check that out. Otherwise, back to the paint discussion. One of the questions we had going into this whole paint project was how much paint do we need? We ended up buying a four gallon paint kit from PPG, and it ended up working out just about perfectly. We used most of that four gallon kit. I will say though that not all those four gallons ended up on the airplane. So we did a little bit of test or practice work first, and then the first couple coats of primer we sanded, so a decent amount was sanded, and then there was some overspray and a couple spills here and there. So maybe about two gallons ended up on the airplane when all was said and done. A couple of people have asked about clear coating the airframe. The idea with clear coat is that you get to UV protect the carbon fiber structure while still preserving the carbon fiber appearance. We have been testing some clear coat options in parallel to the whole painting operation, but there are a couple challenges here. There are a lot of options for UV resistant clear coat out there, but not many of them are validated to an aerospace standard. Most of the clear coats do degrade over time, and this isn't normally a problem because they're typically used for consumer products or automotive applications on non-structural parts. This degradation would be a problem for our airframe though, so we wanna find something that can really last a long time. We did test it on a couple test parts as well as on the flaps. I'll show you one of those now. Here's the results from the clear coating. The idea with the flaps is that they're on the bottom of the airframe. They sit down here so they're not getting direct sun exposure. We have okay results, but we wanna do some more testing with this. The other thing with clear coat is that it preserves the dark color of the surface, which could heat up in the sun. There's a little bit more testing we wanna to do to validate the upper temperature limits of this arrangement. So what's left before we fly this airplane? Basically a bunch of small but important tasks. We still have to install the seat belts in the cabin. And then the actuation system for the main gear is coming up next. There's a gearbox that drives this strut up and down to retract it into the fuselage. We have the CAD together for that. We've ordered raw stock and some miscellaneous hardware to make it work. We're gonna be building that up and testing it soon. And then we have some other small systems tasks. We'll save those for future videos. I think we'll leave it here for now. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.